Hey kiddos, I have a really neat science activity for us to do today to help us understand how an octopus is able to move into really small spaces. First of all, did you know that an octopus body does not have any bones? It doesn't have any bones at all. I wonder how does that help the octopus when he's trying to move into small spaces, into small cracks and caves. Well, to show you why that helps, we're gonna do this activity. You will need a Ziploc bag, a large Ziploc bag, and on that Ziploc bag, I want you to draw with a black permanent marker a big octopus. We did a guided drawing earlier, so I drew another octopus all over this big Ziploc bag. Now. You will also need some water, some food coloring, a paper plate, and mom and dad need to cut a hole in the middle of the paper plate, just about an inch in diameter, parents. So we have a hole in the center of the plate. Let mom and dad do that part. This is going to be our cave that the octopus is trying to squeeze through. Now, you will also need some toothpicks for something we're gonna do a little bit later on. But to get started, if you have your octopus drawn onto your Ziploc bag, did you know that octopus can take water into their body and squirt it back out, which helps them to swim in the water? So we're gonna add some water to the inside of our Ziploc bag. We're gonna put some water in there, okay? Just like real octopus take water into their bodies. Now I'm adding almost the entire uh, water bottle there. Now octopus are also colorful. They can be different colors. So I want you to take that food coloring that you got and I want you to add a couple drops of food coloring. Woo! to make our octopus color colorful. And then you'll want to seal it up. First of all, you wanna make sure you get the air out, the extra air. So I'm going to press that air out. I just want my water in the bag. Ooh, look how colorful. In fact, I'm gonna set this down onto my white paper here so that you can see my colorful octopus. He's a red octopus. Okay, well, do you remember how I said the paper plate was going to be like a cave or some rocks that an octopus is trying to squeeze in and, and to hide from maybe predators or maybe he's trying to hide so he can catch prey? Well, do you think that our octopus could fit through this hole? What do you think? I would think there is no way, but remember, an octopus doesn't have any bones in its body and having no bones helps it to move into very small spaces. So to show you why this works, why having no bones really helps them, I want you to now take that Ziploc bag that is shield, um, sealed shut really good and I want you to see if you can fit that octopus through the crack. I'm, I'm going to try it right now with mine. So far, I've got part of him through the crack. Oh, I've got more of him coming through that crack in the rocks. Oh my goodness, he's moving through. He is coming through that really small little hole in our pretend uh, rock. I cannot believe it. Something so big is able to fit through that small hole. Wow, I've almost got him all the way through. Ah, my octopus is through and he's all in one piece and I didn't break my rock at all. Wow, amazing. Wow, let's do something. Let's add to this experiment. Let's take some toothpicks now. These toothpicks are gonna represent bones. Now, what if an octopus had bones in his body? Let's open that Ziploc bag back up. Now, if you don't have toothpicks, maybe you can find a couple of small sticks in your yard, but I'm gonna put these toothpicks in here. We're gonna pretend that an octopus has bones just like you and me and other fish that are in the sea that have bones. Would that octopus be able to move through the same crack 
that really small hole if he had bones? Well, we're gonna find out, we're gonna test it out. That's what scientists do. They have a question in their mind that they're wondering about, and then they test it out to come up with a conclusion. Well, I know that the octopus got through the hole the first time, but the first time he didn't have any pretend bones in his body. Now he's got all these, all these toothpicks floating around in there that are representing bones. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna try to send him through. Well, I got part of him through. Uh-oh, I'm noticing something. He's getting stuck where he's got bones. Those bones do not want to fit through the holes. They're just, they're just too big and they're hard. The bones don't bend. Now, the part of the bag that doesn't have any bones in it is all through, but if you notice, there are no bones in that part. I've got all the bones right here. They're all stuck. Oh my. Let me show you without dumping my water. Oh boy, all the bones. The bones are left. So I'm thinking that the reason why an octopus is able to move into very small areas is because he's able to um, make his body squeeze up really tight and go in those small areas. He doesn't have any bones. Yeah, that would get caught like this. Wow, so cool. Well, I hope this science activity shows you why having no bones is really helpful to the octopus. Have fun.